This is Mark O'Brien with an update on the Project Libre desktop and our new release 1.9.3. I first want to thank Laurent and the team for an amazing but frustrating effort to release this update while also working to release the cloud version. They are dedicated and it certainly cut into vacation time over the holidays and even New Year's Day. We were actually working with the community members in Taiwan on New Year's Eve Day uh, on a translation. Very much appreciate the community contributions and the work as it's excellent. We've updated things that are not visible, but very good for the community. We also have released a previous how-to video on changing languages. It was command line related, and we've now replaced that with an intuitive dialog box. You can even play around and see Project Libre's uh, 29 languages. I've traveled the world extensively and find it quite interesting. Important note before we continue. Please note that when you download on Mac or Windows, you need to accept Project Libre coming from an unknown developer we are not part of the App Store <clears throat> with Apple, for instance, so you need to go to System Preferences, Security, Privacy, and accept the exception. <clears throat> the same with Windows. The warnings sound awful. and not going to comment on the motivations, but you can search online and see in Windows 10 it is similar. You need to click on Update Security, then click on For Developers, Enable Developer Mode, and Restart Your Computer. That's a lot to download, but uh, okay, now on to the update. Libre Desktop 1.9.3 has been updated with new features in the language, date, and currency areas. We've also added five new languages and now have 29 which cover a huge percentage of the global population and countries. As you can see in this image, uh, we've added Chinese Traditional in addition to our existing Chinese Simplified, Danish Italian which was updated, uh, Thai and Vietnamese. Uh, this is really important. Uh, for instance, in addition to this, we've added the ability to set the local currencies as well as date formats. And for instance, with the 30-odd countries that speak Spanish, they have different uh, currency symbols and also uh, sometimes specific languages differences. And this allows us to customize all of that. Project. I'm just going to name the project 1, and I'll name myself the project manager. And you'll note with a start date, it is uh, in our standard uh, nomenclature with month, day, and year. I'll say OK on that, and I will create this project. I'll also just name a task one. It's not about that. And I'll say it's 10 days in duration. And then let me go through. And what I'm going to do is drag the cost. Or actually, I'm going to enter a... Uh, if I click on the top bar and I right click, I'll say insert column and let me find cost. I'm going to insert the cost column right here. It's alphabetized. I just have to find cost. I'll insert that and you can see it's with the dollar in zeros. If I go to resources and go to the resource pool, I'll also name that one and I'll scroll over <clears throat> and say the rate here, see it's dollars per hour. I'll say $100 per hour, go back to the task, and I'll assign that resource. So if I click on this task, assign resource, assign one, you can see the cost is $8,000, and it's in dollars because of that. The big thing we've done now in Project Libre, let me save this. The big thing we've done in Project Libre is this globe in the corner. Okay, If I click on the globe, you can see you now have the ability to set the, uh, the language, the country, and later I'll discuss the custom locales we can do here. But let me scroll down through <clears throat> and I'll find DE, which is German. I'm going to keep the country United States and you can see it tells us that local changes will affect after the restart. So let me say OK and let me save this. And again, I have to restart, so I will quit Project Libre. I will relaunch Project Libre, <clears throat> and it will be in German. And you can see if you scroll through the tips of the day, they're all in German, and the user interface is in German. So let's open our project one. And again, this is all now in German. The date format has changed. So you can see now it's uh, day, month, and year. However, if we scroll through on cost, it is in US dollars at 8,000. 
So what I can do is come back over and I will change that country to German. To Germany. And actually German is not the right term to use, it's Germany. Um, and again, I need to restart this, so I will save, quit, restart, and now when I restart, you're going to see the currency has changed. So if I scroll over, you can see now instead of US dollars, uh, it's 8,000 euros with the euro sign. And again, we've got our date format correct, and we're in German across the board. Let's go back to the globe and click down here. And once again, I'm going to change this uh, back to EN, which is English. But if you look at a Spanish there, it's important to note that, for instance, you can have the Spanish language for your user interface, but the currencies of the many countries are such different. Uh, the Chilean peso uses the dollar sign, but their neighbor to the north, Peru, uses the centimo, which is an S slash and a dot. So it matters for both the language and the location. I'm going to go back to English. I have to scroll down to find the United States, which I'll do. And I will once again uh, save that, and I will quit, and then relaunch it. Uh, these are the basics, but there's more that have changed. Um, I changed it back to English for my familiarity. Um, but let me close and open one again. But you can also customize your language, and the language that can be customized uh, is important uh, because, as you can see in this image of different Spanish countries, that's a lot of them globally, and some have different uh, dialects, etc. So, <clears throat> and in fact, a, a, a good example. Of, of that is uh, with the custom locales is uh, German, which I was using before. Austria certainly um, speaks German, but it's, Austra it's Austrian German. Now we have about a half million uh, downloads in Germany, but we also have 100,000 more downloads outside of Germany that uses different dialects. And what we can do is we can customize that as well. So if we come down through, <clears throat> I'm going to say use custom locales, and you need to set your directory. This is where we're going to, uh, to do this. And I'm going to export the languages and say OK. If I go to Finder, uh, you can see in that directory I set, Project Libre Custom Language Directory, it's in, in pod. If I click down through, these are all of the languages that have been exported. Now, each language has two files. There's a client file, and there's a menu file. So I highlighted client.de, and I will highlight menu.de. Let me open this. I'll open it with my text app. And what I can do is take a look, and anyone can do this now. <clears throat> you can come through. And all in, on these, it's the, uh, the, the ribbon task is datai. So I'm just going to put datai.at, which is Austrian. So if I look through list of country codes, you can see Austria's country code is at. So you can also do it that way. But if I put at there, just to show you the customization I'm doing, if you had different words for these, you would put the different words. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to save this to the actual Project Libre custom, not in the export, but to that. And I'm going to go to the client, and I'm going to save the client, also the custom language export. And I'm going to go back through in Finder to make sure they're there. And sure enough, there's client.de and menu.de text. If I go back to Project Libre and I come back through, I'm going to now import that change, and it's going to change the UI of the German version. 
So let me import, and you can see the code DE, which is German, the client properties was imported, and the menu properties were imported. The only one I changed was the menu properties, but you need both of those. So now if I go through and I change the language to DE, you're going to see it come up as if it would come up with uh, in Austria. And again, that, that .at is not the changed word in Austrian. I was just trying to show how you can uh, change the language. So what you would do is you would go through Excuse me as I try to find Germany. It's done by <clears throat> by code, so it's going to be in the D's, even though it's Germany. That sounds strange, but that's the way it is. Here's Germany. And again, it's because the code is DE. It alphabetizes that way. And let me save this and do our now familiar quit and launch. And what you're going to see is that the, uh, the German language has been changed on the menu. So instead of the German word, you can see it's datai, AT, AT, and AT. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what I did in the text edit was, in fact, to change that. What you would do if you wanted to change any uh, dialect, um, I, I know that the Argentinian Spanish has a, a strong accent of Italian in it, you would go through and you would simply just change uh, the different words so that uh, it wouldn't be data AT, it would be whatever, in fact, that was. But if I go back to Project Libre, you can see our user interface has now changed due to our importing of those client properties. Again, I don't know the actual dialect differences, so I put just an AT, which is the Austrian country code, in parentheses to show how the UI would be changed. Um, you would simply go to the file, as we have here, and you would change any words that are different uh, in dialect. You'd change them and save that. Um, you'd save that, uh, that menu.de or menu-whatever, uh, and you'd send it to your set uh, folder. You'll be opening it in the export folder, but you want to do a save as and save it into uh, the folder you set. Import that, and when you import that, save, restart Project Libre, and you can see the dialect uh, differences uh, reflected in Project Libre. Uh, let's go back to Project Libre. I've actually changed it to, uh, to Hindi. Just for fun, you can you can take a look at what it would look like in Japanese, the Chinese languages, etc. But uh, I, I find it interesting. But again, the biggest change here is the biggest change here is the globe. And when you click on the globe, you can change. I have it Hindi and India here. If you're changing languages, make sure we had used custom locales. You don't want that checked if you're changing languages up here because it's going to actually look for the custom locales and it'll look for these, which are the actual default uh, properties. To wrap this up, our community is virtually in every country in the world. The ability to manage your projects in your preferred language, have your local currency and date format are major advantages. I can't imagine trying to enter projects in the um, day, month, um, year uh, format. It would take me a long time. So I think you as a community will benefit from this as well. <clears throat> and you also don't need to worry about having the US dollar sign. You can have your own currency symbols. Uh, we did redirect resources from the upcoming cloud release to res respond to this community request. It's been a high priority for a long time. So please send us your modified language uh, menu and client files if you do modify into different languages and we'll get those included. Project Libre has a great community. And uh, we'll note new language contributors in an upcoming blog. But you can also help us by tweeting hashtag Project Libre and getting the word out. Uh, the Project Libre team, as again, is, is working very hard and hope this is helpful.